everyone. So in this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at four distinct software suites that will allow you to design and export an avatar that will work for VTubing with your Rococo motion capture system. So those softwares are Vroid, MetaHuman Creator, Character Creator 3, and Daz 3D. Each of these tools is distinct and gives you lots of different unique options for creating your avatar. But the thing that they share is that they will all allow you to create an avatar that's rigged with the proper blend shapes for facial motion capture and is easy to get working in either Unreal or Unity. So without further ado, let's jump into Vroid. So Vroid or Vroid Studio is a free software that was recently released and is frequently used to create avatars for programs like VRChat. As you can see from the website, you can generate the classic looking anime style avatars, but there's a surprising amount of customization for creating unique avatars, as well as several free sample avatars that come with the software. However, even though these avatars aren't really going for realism, it is possible to rig them with the full suite of Apple AR Kit blend shapes, which means you can get some very precise performances from the avatars. So let's get into the software itself. You can download Vroid Studio from vroid.com, just navigate to Vroid Studio and click download for your platform. When you download and open up Vroid Studio, you are greeted with this screen of sample avatars. We're going to be using one of these sample characters as a base for our avatar. So let's select avatar sample B. It's got fun hair and a cool outfit. You'll also be able to download the project files for this character in both Unreal and Unity in the next episode. So check that out if you want to play around with this character. So once we open up the character, we can move around the scene by using the middle mouse button to drag and zoom and the right mouse button to orbit. As you can see, we have a ton of different options to make a completely custom avatar. We're not gonna get into all the different ways you can make the changes, but we do have a bunch of tutorials and process videos in the resource doc for how to edit the face, hair, clothes, jewelry. You can even make custom color schemes or drawings onto the clothing within the software. What's really amazing here is that this is all completely free. In the clothing editor, you can even see a bunch of different standard clothing items you can swap between as well. The program is based out of Japan, so if you don't know Japanese, you may have to do some guesswork or translation depending on what you're trying to do, but in general, the system is really easy to use. What's also nice is that the particular workflow we'll be using will automatically add the spring bones for the hair and the clothing, so our avatar will be super dynamic while we're moving it around. When we've finished creating our avatar, we'll go to the camera slash exporter section and navigate to export. The model will be posed to a T-pose, which is perfect for our workflow, and then we'll just hit export. When we do, you'll see this screen where you essentially need to register your avatar. So this doesn't cost you anything, and you don't have to fill out any of the contact information fields. I'm using version 0.14.0, so I will add that in case I need to reference it later. And you can also make sure to check this commercial checkbox so that you can use this in a monetized stream. When you create the avatar, a version of it will be stored on the Vroid servers for anyone to see, but you can again set the avatar so that only you can use it for VTubing. Hit OK and you'll be asked to save the avatar out. I'm going to save it to my Vroid demo scene. And one thing to note is that these avatars aren't exported with the AR kit blend shapes. We'll be adding them to this character when we import them into Unity. So check out episode seven for that. And again, to download the free project file with this avatar. Also, it's totally possible to purchase VRM avatars or Vroid accessories and avatars and outfits from sites like booth.pm. So you don't have to design everything by yourself if you don't want to. The next software we're going to be looking at is MetaHuman Creator. MetaHumans were released by Epic Games in 2021, but it's important to note that they are still very much in an alpha stage, so they could change significantly by the time they are fully released. However, you can access them completely for free by signing up for MetaHuman Creator right now. MetaHumans can only be used in Unreal Engine, so that's what we'll be focusing on in Episode 8. To create a MetaHuman, you simply head to the MetaHuman Creator website, the MetaHumans are designed online in your browser, and then you download them to Quixel Bridge when you're ready to import them into Unreal Engine. If we go to Create MetaHuman, you can see that there are 50 base MetaHumans to start your design process from. We're going to select Natalia so we have access to some cool hair dynamics.
Once we select our character, we'll hit next, and now there are a dizzying amount of customization options. Unlike Vroid, metahumans are going for a super high amount of realism, but because they were developed by Unreal Engine, they are able to work very smoothly in real time for VTubing, for example. So we can go through and make changes to our metahuman video game character creation screen style, but we can also go in and actually sculpt our metahuman. There's also this interesting metahuman blend style of sculpting, where you can essentially add three of the other metahumans and kind of mix and match between them on your avatar. As always, you can explore the resource doc for more links to metahuman creator tutorials. We're going to leave Natalia like this for now. So if you look up here, you can see this all changes saved message. Unlike a lot of the other programs, the MetaHuman creator is constantly updating any MetaHuman changes you make in Quixel Bridge, which is Unreal Engine's asset management software. So you don't ever really export your character from MetaHuman creator. Instead, if we open up Quixel Bridge and log into the same account we used to make our MetaHuman, you can see that we now have Natalia listed here with our other MetaHumans. So we can go ahead and download her, and then we'll be ready to take her into Unreal Engine and connect her with the Rococo mocap once she's downloaded. Because Unreal Engine and the MetaHumans are all free, we're able to offer you her project file, as well as a bunch of other free characters we've set up, all ready to go with Rococo mocap that you can download for free in the links in episode 8. Okay, let's move on to Character Creator 3. So Character Creator 3 is made by Reillusion, which also makes iClone 7, Character Animator 4, and a few other fantastic 3D programs. Character Creator 4 is coming out soon, and we'll update this workflow when we get a chance to play around with the new tool, but most of what we're going to talk about should still be relevant. You can create both realistic and more stylized characters with Character Creator 3, and you have a ton of control over even the smallest aspect of the customization process. However, unlike the other software we see in this episode, Character Creator is not free. You can purchase it from the Reillusion website, but one thing to note is that in addition to Character Creator 3, you'll also need to purchase the Character Creator 3 Pipeline extension, which will allow you to actually export your characters out of Character Creator 3 for use in Unreal and Unity. In general, with Reillusion products, I would make sure to use the 30-day free trials and make sure to do extensive research to make sure you want to invest in this system. The Reillusion website isn't the easiest to navigate, and I've seen a few people buy into the system not really realizing what the limitations might be. That being said, Character Creator 3 is a fantastic tool, and you can see it being used a lot in CG work. Most notably, the Corridor Crew channel uses Character Creator 3 models a lot. So we can open up Character Creator 3 from the Reillusion Hub. When we do, we are greeted with the standard avatar that we can start customizing. We can add clothes, hair, makeup, and most importantly, we can make changes to our character's shape parameters. So this is similar to Daz 3D, which we'll be covering next, in that you don't need to sculpt your character, and instead can use these shaping sliders to easily create something really unique. What's great is that Reillusion also has a storefront where you can buy pre-made characters, wardrobe, hair, or morphs, and once you purchase those characters, you also get their morph shapes so that you can incorporate aspects of them into fully original characters. Character Creator 3 also has a paid plugin called Headshot where you can load in a photograph and the software will do its best to recreate that person as a digital avatar. Here we're dragging in a picture of Brad Pitt that I found online. And as you'll see, it's not perfect, but this is a really fantastic tool for starting the process of creating a more realistic digital double. For our VTuber workflow, however, we're going to be using this character that I bought on the Reillusion Marketplace, Fianna. The first thing we need to do before we export her for use as an avatar is to make sure she is a CC3 plus character. So if you go into the attribute panel, you can see that we have this button convert CC3 to CC3 plus. If you don't see this button, then you can skip this part because you already have a CC3 plus character. However, if you do have this button, click it to start the conversion process. We need to do this because it's only with the Character Creator 3 Plus characters that you get access to the AR Kit blend shapes. Once the conversion process is done, the next thing we'll need to do is actually enable those blend shapes. So we'll go to the Motion Pose panel and click Edit Facial. 
Now here under default, we want to set this to EX plus or expression plus. This is that new expression set that Reillusion just added that contains all of our blend shapes. If we go to the modify panel and then to the last tab, you can see all these blend shapes that we just enabled. We'll close this panel, and then the last thing we'll do before we export is click Set HIK T-Pose. Now we can go up to File, Export FBX, Clothed Character. So on this screen, we want to make a few changes. We're gonna be working in Unreal, so the first thing that we'll do is set the preset to Unreal. Then we'll select Current Pose. We'll also select Delete Hidden Faces. This will delete all the body polygons behind the clothing, which will both reduce our poly count for the character and also help with clipping issues between the body and the clothes. We'll also click Bake Diffuse and Specular Maps. And then we'll go into the Advanced panel and enable Open Mouth as Morph. Now we can hit export and save this character out for use in Unreal. As always, you can consult the resource doc for more info on Character Creator 3 and exporting characters. The final software for avatar creation we're going to be looking at is Daz 3D. Daz is very similar to Character Creator 3 in that you can create both realistic and stylized characters. There's a marketplace where you can buy pre-made characters or clothing or hair. And there is a plugin called Face Transfer that allows you to load in a photograph for a digital double. Daz Studio is free, but the best part about Daz is its extensive marketplace and the availability of non-human characters. Not only non-human characters, but non-human characters that will work perfectly with facial motion capture, which is a pretty rare thing in the current market. So to get started with Daz, you want to download Daz Central. Daz Central kind of acts as the hub for all the assets you've purchased from the Daz store, as well as your plugins. From here, we can open up Daz Studio, which is free to use and is the program we'll actually use to design our character. So let's load up a figure and talk about how Daz works. All Daz characters are built off of different generations they've had of their figures, the most recent generation being Gen 8.1. In this new generation, they've added facial blend shapes, so this is the type of figure we'll want to work with. We're going to load in this turtle character, and when we do, you can see that it's a Gen 8.1 character. After it's loaded, we can bring in its turtle shell prop, and we could also go and load in clothing or hair if we wanted. However, what I really want to take a look at is the Shape tab, which is the real power of Daz. If we scroll down to the bottom here, you can see that this turtle is really just a base Gen 8.1 character with this turtle shape turned all the way on. Here are all the other shapes or morphs from the other characters I've purchased, and because they all share that same base figure, we can mix and match between them to create something really unique. It should be noted that you can only use characters of the same gender generally as shaping morphs. So if we were pleased with how this looked, we'd be ready to export this fella out to Unreal and move on. But that's only because this is a Gen 8.1 character. But what if we wanted to use a Gen 8 character instead of 8.1? A lot of the really fantastic figures on the Daz Marketplace are Gen 8. This teddy bear, for instance. The process of working with a Gen 8 character is as follows. First, we're going to go in and load up a standard Gen 8.1 male. When he's loaded, we're going to go to our shaping tab, and we'll scroll down to the teddy bear morph and apply this Gen 8 morph to our Gen 8.1 character. Obviously, the human skin material is a little scary on this bear, especially with these nipples. So to add our teddy material, we'll go back to our teddy bear character, go to materials, and then with our character selected, we will add our material. And there we go. 
We're going to save this character as is, and then in episode 10, we'll get in exactly how to export this character out to Unreal. Again, the coolest thing about Daz is that the marketplace is extensive, and we've listed a couple of our favorite morphs and characters in the resource doc, so I check that out if you're looking for different ways to make really cool, unique, especially non-human type characters. So that's how you design and export avatars from each of those four software suites. In the next episode, we're gonna focus on Vroid exclusively and go through the workflow for bringing a Vroid avatar into Unity and into Unreal and getting it all up and running with Rococo Motion Capture. We'll see you there.